The marching band would have their American flag and they would have a rifle escort, and that's where it stems from. You would never see any dance or anything like that. It was all straight lines. Winter Guard is an indoor pageant involving the throwing of prop rifles, sabers, and other objects. Впереди камера, фиксирующая нарушение. Ограничение скорости 60 км в час. Marching to the coolest beat on the BBC World Service at bbcworldservice.com. Coming up on News Hour in the next 30 minutes, New Zealanders begin handing in their semi automatic weapons that have been banned following the Christchurch mosque attack. Now, the latest on Friday's attack on a hotel in Somalia, the fire that almost derailed the Apollo moon mission, and why is the United States launching a commission to redefine human rights? All of that after the news. BBC News with Eileen McHugh. An Islamist attack on a hotel in the Somali port of Kismayu has killed at least 26 people, among them foreigners. The militants set off a large car bomb as the assault <laughs> began on Friday. Louisiana is feeling the first effects of Tropical Storm Barry that's approaching the coastline and growing stronger. Storm surges and heavy rain are expected later and the floodgates have been closed in New Orleans. There's been a further escalation in the dispute between Japan and South Korea, which is threatening global supplies of microchips. Seoul says it's asked Japan to lift curbs on exports. Tokyo says it's received no such request. There's been severe flooding in Nepal and northeastern India. More than 30 people have been killed by landslips and swollen rivers. Scuffles have broken out in Hong Kong at protests against mainland Chinese traders. Thousands of people were demonstrating against traders from mainland China bulk buying products in Hong Kong. Officials in Afghanistan say the security forces have killed two militants who stormed a hotel in the northwest of the country and opened fire. Two police officers have also been killed. At least one more gunman is still inside the building. The boss of a Ukrainian TV news channel has challenged the country's leadership to swiftly condemn an overnight grenade attack on its headquarters. The 112 Ukraine channel is scheduled to broadcast a controversial documentary by Oliver Stone, the Russian-backed insurgency in eastern Ukraine. Poland's biggest opposition party has pledged to phase out coal-fired power production by 2040. Polish air quality is among the worst in Europe. And the women's final is being played at the Wimbledon Tennis Championship shortly. Serena Williams, who's hoping to claim her 24th Grand Slam singles title, is being challenged by Simona Halep from Romania. BBC News. Coming up next, we'll get more details about Friday's militant attack on a hotel in southern Somalia. First, though, New Zealanders have begun handing over their semi-automatic weapons, which have been banned since the Christchurch mosque attack. The first of more than 250 nationwide collections under a police-supervised buyback scheme took place in the Canterbury region, which includes Christchurch. Superintendent Mike Johnson is the police commander for the Canterbury district. We've had 169 people come in today, and they've handed over 224 of these prohibitive firearms in 217 parts here. So explain how the process works. They fill in the online forms and then they come along to the local collection point and then they sit down and we complete the rest of it with the firearms in front of us. And at that point it's agreed on the state of the firearms and that's near new, used and poor. And that dictates the, the dollar amount that goes alongside. It then gets direct paid into their account within 10 working days. And if they dispute the condition that, that you have assessed it to be in, is there, is there some kind of form of appeal? There is a process around that. The important thing is the conversation that goes on with the firearm in front of both parties, the law that's come in, it's fairly disruptive in that process. Are the numbers what you're expecting? 
the numbers are in excess of what we were expecting and the thing we, we're really mindful of is making the experience as positive as we can because there's a bit of nervousness but these are good people and because of the law change they now have these prohibited weapons and they've got a six month period to bring them and do the handover process. You accept though that there are plenty of gun owners who are pretty upset about this, say, look, we are good law-abiding citizens, uh, we are using our guns for legal purposes, we are being penalised for something we have had no control over. You know, it's 17 weeks ago uh, in our place, Canterbury, since the tragic events of our mosque attack, so we're really mindful of that, and, and as I said a moment ago, it's really important to remember these are good law-abiding people and you rightly say the legislation's changed on them and that is polarising some people so we're working our way through that. Do you think it's going to be perhaps as easy to persuade people in other parts of the country I mean, given you are in the part of New Zealand that was so directly affected by the mosque attack perhaps it's focused minds more than in other areas? 